Today, my friends, we are going to look at my camera bag of 2020. So with no further ado, let's get right into it. So starting off, the backpack that I use is the Manfrotto Red B backpack. The look of it is decent, not as cool as Peter McKinnon's backpack, but what's more important is that it can safely transport my gear and have quick access to it. It has a rear access, which keeps the gear safe from potential thieves. Nobody can touch my gear. It also comes with a side tripod connection over here if you want to bring a tripod with you. My favorite parts are the two side and top access points uh, that allows me to quickly grab my camera and capture the moments on the go. There is a 15 inch holder for my MacBook Pro. The size is perfect for using it as a hand luggage. Overall, really nice camera bag, works for my purpose and costs around 150 bucks. Ever played Mario Kart 64? Mario, tell me what's my next item? This hasn't changed. I'm still loyal to my Sony a7 III. This is a full frame mirrorless camera that can shoot uncropped 4K 25 frames per second and 1080p at 120 frames per second. I had this camera for about a year now. And the reason why I love this camera so much is because it's packed with tons of features. You can get a lot of value for its price. It has a great low light capability, five axis in-body stabilizer, accurate autofocus, a battery that lasts more than half a day, and that is just the beginning. At around $2,000, you get a workhorse of a camera, and I think it's among the best camera you can buy currently for its price. I use this camera for all of my project and has never let me down. Mwah. If I could just bring one lens with me, it would be the Sony 24 to 105 f4. The image quality you get is outstanding and covers all of the focal lengths that I need. The aperture of f4 offers a nice bokeh when extending it fully and having the subject close to the lens. The range is more than enough for me and the Sony 24 to 105 just costs roughly around $1,100. This is definitely a great all-around lens to have in your camera bag. To have continuous control over the light passing through the lens, I use an ND filter from Tiffin. Now by just rotating it, you can see how it starts to get dark. It's like sunglasses for your camera. This can help in many ways. For example, if you want to decrease the depth of field by using a wider aperture to separate the subject from the background or maintain your shutter speed, which is usually double the frame rate if you're going for that cinematic look. I don't recommend investing in a cheap one, especially if you're using a high quality lens on your camera. It's like eating spaghetti with ketchup even though I do like Jollibee because I'm half Filipino. Next on our list are the Sony NPF-Z100 batteries. I always bring at least two separate batteries with me. These are the original Sony batteries that I use for the Sony a7 III. They are expensive and cost around 80 bucks each, but you can definitely get cheaper ones like the Wasabi power battery. Those cost around 53 bucks. Next comes the DJI Mavic Pro 2. At home, I don't use this drone that much. It's kind of overrated, but when I travel, I always bring it with me. I just love flying with this drone. I can get some really unique shots and produces a nice 4K 10-bit image quality. It's also very durable. I have crashed it a few times, but it still works like a charm. I like the redesigned propellers uh, that make it far quieter than the older models. I don't like it when people watch me fly. I just get really nervous. So having these silent propellers will definitely help keep the attention low. The Mavic Pro 2 doesn't come cheap. It's around $1,500 with the Fly More kit, which includes two batteries and other goodies that you probably don't want to miss out. If you are more of a hobbyist drone flyer, then this drone might not be for you. Next comes my editing machine. I use the MacBook Pro that is right over there. Ugh. 
This is the Retina 50 inch model and I bought this like mid 2015 that has a 2.2 gigahertz quad core and a Intel Iris Pro graphics card. It's not the best, but it's powerful enough to handle my basic 4K edits. Nothing too crazy though. As for our next item, I edit off a portable SSD. This is the Samsung portable SSD T5. It has 500 gigabytes storage and has a super fast transfer speed up to 540 megabits, which is important for video editing. It's very small and therefore doesn't use much space. Since it's an SSD, it doesn't have any moving parts in it and is shock resistant. This one costs around 90 bucks and goes up depending on the size you get. Very reliable, top quality, definitely a must have if you're editing on the go. I store all of my memory cards in this memory card case holder from B-Way. It's compatible with SD and micro SD cards. The great thing about it is that it provides full protection, very easy to carry, doesn't use up much space. You can simply slip it into your camera bag and that's it. Now comes my favorite item, the DJI Osmo Mobile 3. If you have a smartphone that can shoot video, then definitely get this gimbal. Together with the Filmic Pro app, you can get some really nice footages. I use this gimbal with my iPhone 11 Pro Max. I have done lots of videos with it. This just adds so much value for the price of $130. Uh, because you can get some really unique shots that would not be possible when shooting handheld. In some occasions, I even just bring the small gimbal and my iPhone with me and leave the rest of the gear at the hotel. Who cares? Sometimes I just want to take it easy and not carry a bunch of stuff with me. Uh, you know, just have a relaxed day, but still have the opportunity to capture moments. I recently upgraded from the Aperture M9 to the Aperture ALMC. This is probably the most advanced LED light Aperture has ever made. This is a bi-color and RGB light. This thing runs up to two hours of use at max brightness. It comes with built-in magnets on the bottom for mounting it on a metal base. What I really like are the different built-in light modes. You can pair the MC with the Cetus Link app that gives you a ton of more options. You can use it as a hair light or as a practical light in the background. You could use it as a key light, but you might want to add an additional diffuser. Overall, very small light fits perfectly into my camera bag. Next on the list, we have the Rode Video Micro. This produces really great audio for its size. It comes with a windshield and doesn't really take up much space. Also great for vlogging and because it's a shotgun mic, uh, you can just point it right at you and start talking. What I really like about it is that it doesn't need additional battery. You can just plug it into your camera and you're ready to go. Very affordable mic, runs around $50. This is a ultra compact wireless microphone system with a transmitter and a receiver, which I recently added to my camera bag. They have built-in rechargeable batteries that last up to seven hours. It has a built-in mic and has an LCD screen that displays useful information. Definitely a great and simple solution for wireless audio. This comes in handy for me if I'm traveling in another country and need to create a YouTube video. I can just simply turn on the microphone, clip it onto my shirt and start recording. The audio quality is not too bad. I wouldn't say it's outstanding, but it's certainly good enough for my talking head videos. This wireless microphone makes a lot of sense if you're using a mirrorless or DSLR camera. Great for run and gun shooting. Definitely something to have since it's so small and compact. On the bag attached, I have the camera clip from Peak Design. I use it a lot when I go hiking. It has a quick release lock on it. You can just press the red button to quickly take the plate off. When I mount the camera on the plate, it feels really secure and I can just leave the camera hanging without worrying that it will fall off. Coming from the same brand, I use the Peak Design camera strap. 
It has quick anchor mounts, uh, which allows me to quickly clip the camera on and off the strap. If I don't use a gimbal, I use the strap to get more stable footage. Last but not least, we have the DJI Ronin S. Awesome gimbal, it can operate up to 12 hours, which is more than enough. I had done lots of projects with it. I guess for a more travel-friendly gimbal, you might want to go with the Ronin SC. It's more of a lightweight design, around 1.1 kilo, whereas the Ronin S weighs at 1.8 kilo to get the SC version since I'm using a mirrorless camera with the Sony 24 to 105 millimeter. Both of them weigh together 1.2 kilo and the Ronin SC can handle up to two kilos. Anyway, the Ronin S is still a great gimbal for getting unique shots. Definitely something that will always stay in my camera bag. That was it for today's video, guys. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. I would greatly appreciate it. I'm hoping to reach uh, 1,000 subscribers one day. And when that happens, we are going to celebrate it together. Thank you so much for your support and see you in the next video. Let's go.